Welcome everybody uh, to this webinar. As Lucy already mentioned, I'm uh, with uh, one of our uh, current students, Isabella. Uh, I would like to thank her because it's a, busy, a really busy time for them. Uh, this week they had a couple of exams and there's another uh, couple of exams taking place next week. So I'm really grateful that uh, she decided to join us today to give you first-hand information about uh, the program that she's enrolled in, which is the Silo Residential Program. And also, as mentioned by uh, Lucy, uh, my colleague David, uh, who is in Malaysia, and it's uh, midnight his time. So thanks, David, for being with us today uh, to talk about our newly uh, created program that is joined uh, between uh, CLC and, and MISI. So first of all, uh, let us tell you a little bit more about the MIT Global Scale Network. So we are part of this, ne this network, which is on uh, supply chain and logistics excellence. Uh, first of all, of course, there is the uh, center at MIT, CTL, which was created about 20 years ago. Uh, we were the pioneer center of the scale network. So our center was uh, uh, founded more than 15 years ago. In fact, we celebrated our 15th anniversary in February. Uh, then in 2008, uh, the center in Colombia was uh, created. In uh, 2011, if I'm not mistaken, David, then it was a, a center in Malaysia. And more recently, so in 2015 and 16, the centers in Luxembourg and in uh, Ningbo in China. Uh, so all the centers are part of this uh, scale uh, network. Uh, overall, so there is 14 educational programs. Uh, we have around 100 academic partners. Uh, there's about uh, 100 researchers and uh, faculty members, and also 200 corporate partners. Today, uh, specifically, we're going to talk about the programs that uh, we offer here at CLC. So there's three of them. There's three opportunities for you guys out there. So first of all, we were going to talk about the GSEM program. Uh, this is a brand new program that we're offering for next academic year. So as you can see on the screen, it's, uh, it's a 10 months program. Same as the uh, residential program that Isabella is enrolled in. So uh, the way it's uh, divided is like uh, you guys are going to spend the five uh, first month here in Spain, three weeks at MIT, and then four, uh, four months in Malaysia. The full-time residential program CLOG is uh, nine months here in Spain plus the three weeks at MIT. And then the other option that we have is the CLOG blended program, uh, which uh, comprises five online courses, the three-week period at MIT, and the four months in Spain. So all programs have in common the three week at MIT. Uh, so that's when all the students from all the centers and all the different programs will come together. Uh, I'll hand it over to, uh, to David now to give you more information about uh, uh, how wonderful it would be to study in Malaysia as well. Okay, thank you, Marta. Okay, just uh, thank you, first of all, for inviting me to talk about uh, MISI's joint involvement with the GSCM program between Spain, the US and Malaysia. Um, just a little bit about Malaysia, first of all. As you can see from the slide, um, a few things about Malaysia. Bloomberg has ranked Malaysia the most attractive emerging market in Asia and the fifth most, most attractive in the world for 2018. The World Economy Forum's Global Competitors Competitiveness Report in 2018 also ranked Malaysia second in global competitiveness amongst Asian countries. And Mercer, who is the world's largest human resource consultancy firm, also ranked Kuala Lumpur in Asia's top 10 cities for quality of living standards in their 2019 survey. So, well, uh, Malaysia itself is an amazing country with a very friendly and welcoming culture and has a lot to offer. An endless room to explore, ranging from the world uh, famous Petronas Twin Towers to the world's tallest building, which, which were the world's tallest buildings between 1998 and 2004. Obviously, we have a shopping centre which has a high concentration of shopping malls. Uh, we have um, high concentration of also eateries. Um, as you know, Malaysia is well known as a food paradise and uh, there are more than 15,000 um, eateries located in Kuala Lumpur itself. So there are countless tourist attractions within KL um, itself. Too many to mention today. 
um, if we have a look at the next slide, <clears throat> the Malaysia Institute for Supply Chain Innovation, MISI, or MISI as it's often known, is based in Bukit Jelutong, which is in Shah Alam, which is about 30 kilometers from the capital, Kuala Lumpur. As you can see from the photograph in the bottom left hand corner, um, our university campus is an architecturally designed ship style building in the city of Shah Alam, which is actually a university city. Um, our attractive campus comprises of all the amenities you'd expect a university to have from student area, lecture halls, auditorium, gym, library and uh, social rooms. And of course, MISI has its own student transportation. Um, so I won't talk too much about MISI now. If you'd like to know more about MISI, please visit the website. Okay, over to you, Marta. Thank you, David. So if we talk about uh, Zaragoza, Spain, uh, so maybe uh, some of you did not know about the existence of uh, Zaragoza in the map in, uh, in Spain. Uh, uh, so Zaragoza is actually the fifth largest city of Spain and it's actually uh, like uh, 300 kilometers away from the main city so Barcelona, Madrid, Bilbao and also Valencia and as you can see on the on the map it's also uh, so you can reach the main uh, European cities easily so within 1500 kilometers you're uh, in, in Amsterdam or in Frankfurt. So since Isabella is here, I'm, I'm a local and I could tell you uh, all the good things about Zaragoza, but uh, maybe Isabella can comment on what it is like to live in Zaragoza. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Marta. Uh, it's been four months, almost four months, since I moved to Zaragoza and it has been nothing, that, not, nothing but incred incredible. Um, Zaragoza is not such a huge city so you don't really feel like you'll be lost you could practically walk everywhere um, which i really appreciate um it's a very much a university town so there's like a lot of um other fellow university students um all over all over the city and it's you know very festive the the environment and connectivity is also good um there's buses and trams which is like very cheap um very affordable city um, I would say, um, and the the weather is like not so bad. <laughs> I mean, lots of people say that it's very windy here, but uh, I've I've lived in other countries, and this is actually it's not it's not it's not bad at all. It's quite mild. Winters are quite mild, um, and you have very sunny days. So overall, it's a really great city to be living in. Thanks, Isabella. So the center, the uh, Zaragoza Logistics Center, is a research and educational institute on supply chain management. That picture that you can see is uh, well, part of our facilities. I mean, uh, we're in one of those buildings. We moved uh, very recently, uh, so uh, beginning of the uh, of the year. Uh, we're very lucky because uh, before we were in in Plaza in the logistics platform, and uh, it was not so convenient for the students. But uh, today, uh, so. Uh, the center it's uh, it's in, in a logistics hub as well and the, the students uh, do come as uh, Isabella said uh, so some of the students come by foot uh, some of the students uh, do bike here and of course some of the students are now using the famous electric scooters and we've got a bunch of uh, Isabella's classmates who even bought the scooters to, to come on campus uh, if we talk about the university uh, so first of all uh, so uh, the University of Zaragoza. So the University of Zaragoza is one of the most ancient uh, universities in Spain that it was founded in 1542. Uh, as Isabella mentioned, so it's a, it's a university city. There's a lot of students uh, around, so there's about uh, 30,000 students. And then, of course, we are affiliated uh, with MIT, which all of you know about. So within MIT, our partner is the Center for Transportation and Logistics and uh, inside CTL, so is the uh, Supply Chain Management Program. Of course, uh, this is important. Uh, so uh, uh, we're very grateful and uh, we're very happy that uh, we've been uh, ranked uh, number one so by Universal Worldwide uh, for the past uh, four years. So these are the scale masters in supply chain, so the one at MIT our program, the program in Luxembourg, and of course the program in, in Malaysia. We've also been uh, ranked number four in the SEM World's Top 100 University. And in Spain, if uh, any of the uh, uh, 
candidates are there from Spain uh, know what they're ranking uh, from El Mundo. So for the past uh, nine years, we've been ranked number one program in Spain. And then uh, if some of you are taking or are about to take any of the uh, online courses, you will see this guy a lot because uh, he's one of the professors and he's actually one of the people who had this brilliant idea together with Josie Sefi, who is the director of the Center for Transportation of Logistics, to try to uh, give access to the people to online uh, training and uh, also to have the advantage of uh, having people who would not be able to take this online education otherwise. So I'm just going to, to read what he said. So he says supply chain management is the art and science of getting products from where they're made, where you the consumer want them to be. So Chris is the executive director of the Center for Transportation and Logistics. And if you enroll in the program, uh, you'll be able to get to meet him in, in January when we go to MIT. And then, so we have uh, the newly created uh, program and I'll hand it over to David again. Thank you, Marta. Okay, so the uh, Global Masters of Engineering in Logistics and Supply Chain Management Program, or GSCM for short, is a joint initiative between ZLC and MISI, and is offered as a marvellous opportunity for students to study for their master's degree in three different continents, Europe, North America, and Asia. The GSCM program, as you can see from the slide, is a full-time 10-month program between August 2020 and May 2021, starting with five months at Zaragoza in Spain between August and December. Then in January, there's a three weeks at the Independent Activities Period at MIT in the US. And finally, finishing the program with four months in Malaysia. Um, the class size, sizes are deliberately kept small to enable maximum interaction using an active learning technique between students and professors. All ZLC and MISI faculty are international professors of the highest standards from MIT and the program courses held at ZLC and MISI. Well, actually, we're gonna discuss these courses in a little bit more detail in a later slide. So finally on this slide, it's a truly international body of students from around the world. Uh, we'll talk about the program a, bit, a little bit later on another slide. Next slide. So yes, it's a true cross-cultural experience. Not only will there be a great mix of students in your intake from all around the world, but you'll also have the opportunity to experience the people and culture and weather climates in Spain and compare them against the culture in the freezing climate of the US in January, culminating in experiencing and completing the program in the tropics in Malaysia. So for students, who go to work uh, for a company in, supply, in a supply chain environment, they undoubtedly will be working across cultures, time zones, geographies, and across functions. So this program will be a really great start in this, in this early development. And of course, the wealth of knowledge and experience gained, we believe, is a once in a lifetime opportunity let alone all the great networking opportunities that you'll experience on this program. Next slide. I think you want to talk about the top part, orientation, Marta? Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you, David. So let's talk about the program structure. So if you think about the current time, so we're finishing the A term. So first of all, uh, we invite the students to arrive in, in August and we have some team building and career workshops. So this is going to be the same for the CELO presidential program. Uh, the idea to have the team building uh, activities is so that uh, the students will uh, get to know each other before uh, the academic year starts and also because uh, the workload is going to be so heavy that we really want for the students to get to know one another before uh, the, the academic year uh, starts. 
Uh, also, we have some career workshops uh, that are scheduled at that time and uh, that are going to help prepare for, for the academic year and also for the interviews that are going to happen later during the year. It is important also that, that I mentioned that uh, we do have a person here in, in Zaragoza that is uh, fully dedicated to helping the students uh, with their career development. So this is something that uh, we will do at the beginning of the academic year. And uh, also, so uh, that there will be a resume review and uh, currently, so our colleague is uh, going to do a mock interviews. In fact, uh, Isabella just had her mock interview just before joining us for the webinar. And we also have preparatory sessions on maths and finance because some of the people will have uh, the background and uh, maybe it's just going to be a little bit more difficult for them. The A term that I mentioned, so the focus here is systems and methods. So we're going to have all the uh, uh, core courses that are going to be fundamental for the students to acquire the necessary uh, tools. And also because they will need uh, to put some of these tools into practice in the thesis project. So the courses that uh, you see on the screen are the courses that are being taught at the moment. So right now, so given that uh, exams are uh, being uh, taking place now, so there's only the logistics systems course that is still uh, taking place, but uh, these are the courses that uh, you will be expected to take during uh, the fall. It is very intensive, as uh, Isabella may, <laughs> may agree with me, uh, but it's done on purpose so that uh, you guys uh, will have all these uh, tools available to you and then, then during the next term you can focus on all the things. Uh, then we have the uh, B term that is focused on leadership and uh, management and the C term that is focused on specialization and I'll hand it over to, to David to talk a bit more about those. Thank you, Martha. Okay, so the B term, the independent activities period, as I'm sure all of you have heard of, is the three week period in January each year at MIT, Cambridge, Massachusetts, USA, where students from all global scale network centers meet and participate in a wide variety of activities, which include seminars, joint exercises, presentations, industry tours, various competitions, industry speaker presentations, and of course the opportunity to network and showcase their thesis poster presentation at the Research Expo to industry and academia and alumni. And on top of all of this, the great opportunity to network with more than 200 other like-minded students, uh, which in itself can cement ties that can last a lifetime. Um, so all in all, an invaluable opportunity for all students. Um, when we talk about the programmes, just a little bit about the supply chain courses that both the ZLC and MISI offer. When we talk about the programmes offered by both ZLC and MISI, I think throughout all the courses offered, the learning common denominators fall into six essential categories, or should we say six key skills required of a good supply chain professional. The first is to be analytical, which means being able to analyse a problem and determine a root cause and set out to solve it. The second is to have technological savvy, um, as with so many uh, technologies today, such as IoT, big data, blockchain, 3D printing, artificial intelligence, you need to know how to leverage on these technologies to make the supply chain more responsive and efficient. Thirdly, supply chain professionals need to be a system thinker because all the actions will impact on one another, so we have to think of the bigger picture. Next, you must be financially savvy. You need to be able to look at how to turn inventory from, li from a liability into an asset. You need to know your numbers and how they impact on the financial books by looking at the different ways of looking at the supply chain. You need also to be globally connected. You need to be able to look, uh, you, you need to use in forms of optimization to optimize the supply chain network. In fact, there are so many tools to help you do this, which in turn will result in a much leaner supply chain. Last but not least, you need to be a process thinker, which means not focusing on one department, but focusing on the end-to-end -end delivery to a customer, so you can deliver maximum value to the customer 
with um, the minimum of costs. So these are some of the common denominators within the courses taught on this program by both ZLC and MISI, just to summarize in general. Okay, next slide. I think this is for, for uh, this is for, um, Isabel was gonna talk about this. Was Yeah, I guess I just wanted to say that um, everyone is looking very forward to the Boston trip on January. So just like networking and meeting people from all over the scale. So this is something that really with a lot of a lot of people are anticipating. Um, and also on top of just meeting people, just presenting also our thesis topics and getting feedback from other people. That that's something that we feel would be greatly invaluable in this. In, experience. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. This is back to okay. you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Okay. So the external um, learning, this relates to the thesis project. So the thesis project will be run by MISI um, since it will be completed while students are on the last part of the GSCM program at MISI. So just to give a brief overview, the project begins in September at Zaragoza. Um, in most cases, there will be joint projects with two students per project linked to a company project sponsor. MISI will then assign an MISI faculty professor as a thesis advisor for each project. Up until students arrive at MISI, regular contact will be made between the advisor and the student via Skype. So the first stage, students will prepare the introductory chapter and framing of the literature research and data, data collection. Um, then the thesis will be carried out. The thesis itself will be carried out on a spiral model, which means going backwards and forwards from your first chapter to the literature to view to uh, research method. Then the second term of the program, as you know, will be at MIT. This is where you will present your poster presentation from your, um, your thesis project. And finally, between February and May, students will be on MISI campus and they will continue the project with their data analysis and results, um, their discussion and conclusion. They'll be visiting their thesis sponsor companies to gather data and continue developing um, the thesis. And obviously they will continue regular advisor meetings and conference calls with the sponsor. And in May, um, just before graduation, students will complete their thesis and an executive summary. And finally, finally, just before graduation, they'll present the thesis at the MISI Research Fest conference. So that's just a general brief overview. Next slide. So uh, this slide shows that MISI has a very strong industry relationship ties. Uh, these are business partners from previous year's thesis projects. Um, as you'll see, most of these companies have international roots. Um, in fact, those students connected with MISI business partners via their thesis project should consider this is a perfect opportunity to show off their skills as a thesis project could be considered as an excellent job opportunity or a job interview opportunity we found that many of our students working on the thesis with the sponsors actually have ended up working for the same company. They've been offered a job with that company. So it's a great opportunity. Um, and as you can see from this slide, there are many famous brand names on the slide, which we're hoping will be our thesis sponsors um, when you join the program. Next slide. So I'm not sure whether Marta's going to talk about this graduation. Um, the graduation will either be at MISI or Zaragoza, or if you're very quick with your air flights, you could actually attend both. There's nothing to stop you attending one at MISI and then flying directly to Zaragoza, assuming Garrett Zaragoza's after hours, and attending both um, graduation ceremonies. 
Yeah, in fact, it's feasible because Yoshi Sheffi is attending both graduation ceremonies. So uh -huh. if you really want to attend uh, both graduation ceremonies, uh, then uh, you're all uh, most welcome to attend uh, uh, Mrs. Graduation first and jump on a plane and come to graduate uh, with the rest of your classmates here. Yeah, travel with Yossi. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So if we, I'll take this one now. So if we talk about uh, admission deadlines, and uh, this is going to be the same for the residential program, for the CELOC program. So you can see that the first round deadline was November 1st, and we actually received uh, a good number of applications uh, for the different programs, and uh, we've already communicated the decisions on the first round deadline. The next deadline coming up is January 1st, and uh, you can expect to hear from us three weeks after the deadline, provided that your application is complete. And then the third round deadline is March 1st. Uh, the main difference between our programs and the program at MIT is that uh, this is not the cutoff date. Uh, we can then proceed with rolling admissions after this uh, third round deadline, meaning that if you're an international student that is going to need visas for Spain, US, and Malaysia, the latest that you can submit your application would be May 15. If you are a European student not needing a visa, then you can apply until July 15th. And uh, we've actually had uh, students uh, in the past uh, who are uh, Spanish and who even submitted uh, their application in August. So very close to the start date. But just have this picture in mind because this applies to both the GSEM program and the CELOC program. This could be the admission requirements that uh, you will see on our brochures and also on our website. So first you will need to go, uh, complete the application form that has a statement of objectives and you will need to upload all the different documentation. So we also need your resume. Uh, to assess your analytical skills, we would need the, the GMAT and GRE and uh, we've also included uh, one of the online courses that is the SEOX course. Uh, if you come from an engineering background, then uh, if you send us your transcripts, we can assess your quantitative skills and we can waive the requirement. Same applies to the uh, English requirements. So we do require TOEFL, IELTS or other similar English tests. But uh, if you are not a native speaker, but uh, you've been studying uh, in, in an English speaking country, or if you've been working in a company uh, that uh, uses English as a uh, mode of communication, then uh, we can also consider waiving the requirement. We will also ask for the transcripts and your diploma, so uh, graduate and undergraduate uh, uh, if applies. We ask for two letters of recommendation and in this case it would really depend. So if uh, you're a recent graduate and you do not have much work experience, then maybe two letters from uh, former professors. If you're a professional with uh, uh, quite a few years of experience, and uh, maybe the uh, university days are long gone, then uh, two from your supervisors, or uh, better yet, it would be a, a mix of two. So one from industry and one from academia. And there will also be a video statement that you will need to record. Uh, so you don't need to record the video uh, right away. You can see what the questions are and uh, you can send the video whenever you're prepared. We are looking at your soft skills on the video. So we're not interested in having you read from the screen. So really we want to see you as a person and to see how you express yourself. And also we will be able to assess your English skill on the video statement. So all this documentation you need to upload on GradApply. So it's the online application service that it's uh, uh, housed at MIT. So if you want to apply to any of the scale programs, uh, you need to go via GradApply and then uh, you need to uh, check the different programs that uh, you can apply for. So if you want to apply for multiple uh, programs or multiple skill centers, you will just need to take all the programs that you have to uh, or want to apply for. And uh, then again, so we have uh, another quote here that I mentioned before, so that uh, we had Chris Kaplis uh, uh, who's teaching some of the online courses and uh, this is uh, Professor Sheffi. So uh, probably uh, those of you taking the ESEM program uh, will uh, be able to uh, share a flight uh, with him on the way back to, to Zaragoza. Uh, he also comes and uh, teaches in the program. So that he's actually going to come here to Zaragoza uh, first or second, second week uh, in December. And he's the director of the Center for Transportation and Logistics. He's the reason why we're all here today, uh, because uh, it's thanks to him and uh, his connection. So with Zaragoza, with um, 
with uh, uh, Kuala Lumpur and uh, with everybody else that uh, uh, his mind is uh, thinking uh, fast and, and he's also promoting new programs and uh, he's trusting us with uh, these uh, new developments. So the blended program that was launched three years ago. Uh, so Nisi and uh, Cyril C are also teaching uh, and uh, having students on those programs. And if he has any new ideas about new programs, I'm sure that he's gonna count on us from uh, the future. I mean, uh, you can see from, from the screen again, and uh, I mean, uh, so he said, uh, today's multinational companies have operations that span the continents and are becoming more global in reach. Our scale network mirrors this structure. We are preparing students to perform in the highly demanding global environment that now defines the business world. And uh, then uh, let's talk a little bit more about the CLOG program. So as you can see, uh, the GSCM program mirrors the CLOG program. It's uh, basically the curriculum is going to be the same. Both programs are awarded by the University of Zaragoza. So uh, we're going to replicate what we teach here in Malaysia. So then again, as uh, David uh, explained so well, so it's a full-time program. It's 10 months. The small class size is very important for us. Uh, uh, because we do have a, a, a limited number of faculty members and uh, we want for the students to, to feel important and to get the recognition also from the faculty members, not only for the courses and the dedication after the courses, but also for the thesis project. So then again, the three week at MIT, the international faculty body, and it's entirely taught in English. This is uh, again the program structure. So uh, we've mentioned uh, uh, before, so the main difference here, the uh, difference here is that it's uh, taught in Spain for the nine months plus the three weeks at MIT. I'm not just going to repeat what uh, David just said. Uh, we also have a thesis project associated uh, with the program and it's a very important part of the, the program. Uh, we call the, the uh, program Zaragoza Academic Partners. We launched this program back in 2008 and we've worked with 36 uh, companies so far. Uh, some of these companies have had multiple projects over the years because they are very, very happy with the performance of the students. As David said, uh, in our case, it doesn't mean that the students working on a thesis project with a company are going to get a, a job right after the, the, the project, but it's been the case uh, in, in some instances. So as you can see, we have projects with companies in all the different sectors. So energy, uh, uh, pharma, chemicals, uh, consumer goods, electronic, uh, automotive, uh, you name it. Um, we, the way that uh, we work with the companies is that uh, during the summer, we get in touch with the companies and uh, the projects are going to be focused on a real life supply chain problem that the companies are facing. So we ask the companies to send us uh, the description of the, this challenge that uh, they're facing. And uh, we'd like to, uh, for the companies to interact with the students right from the beginning. So mid-September, we're going to have those companies sponsoring projects to come and present the projects to the students. We also give the possibility to the companies to interview the students, but uh, we make it clear that at this point, it's an interview for the thesis project, not for uh, placement after the program. Then uh, it's totally up to the company to decide, okay, yes, I want to interview students according to the resume book and pick some of the students. Some of the companies, they leave it up to us to uh, select students. Some of the companies may decide to interview the whole class if they have the time. And then so it's important for us that uh, for one, we give the companies, uh, uh, the students that uh, they're interested uh, uh, in, but also we'd like uh, to make our students happy and uh, we ask them to rank the projects according to their preference. So we then proceed with a thesis matching and we try to make everybody happy. Uh, so the project will usually start uh, beginning of October and the projects are to be submitted mid-May and uh, the research uh, uh, presentations will take place at the end of May uh, in front of uh, uh, the faculty members and also in front of the uh, sponsoring companies. Uh, Isabella may uh, want to say some yeah. things about uh, her thesis project without being able to say yeah. which company she's working yeah. with. So it's a, it's a global consumer health tech company headquartered in 
um, the Netherlands. And basically, um, they've asked us, so it's basically me and the thesis partner, and they've asked us to develop a demand forecasting model using machine learning um, models. So it's very exciting. We get to work um, directly with the company. We get to work with their data. And, um, and the results that they expect is not just a model, a math model, but something very practical, something that they can actually use um, after we've we've done the we've completed the project. So it's very it's very practical um, the approach to the, the thesis. Thanks, Isabella. And I forgot to say so. She mentioned that she has a partner, so everybody uh, is going to have a partner on their project. And we also like uh, uh, David and Missy. We assign one of our faculty members to be the thesis advisor. Also for the career opportunities, so we have alumni, as you can see, uh, almost everywhere. And uh, these are some of the companies where our alumni are working for. Then again, it's like uh, for the thesis project, so companies in all the different sectors. Uh, it's important that I mention that uh, we do conduct some interviews here on campus uh, from uh, February onwards. Uh, but we mentioned to the students, so right from the scratch, so now during the admissions process and also when the students arrive on campus, that uh, the responsibility for finding a job resides in the student, that uh, we will, of course, uh, help as much as we can, and we will bring in as many uh, companies as possible, but this could be uh, something that the, the students would need to put a lot of focus on. So that's also why uh, the uh, spring term is not going to be so overloaded for, for the students. Uh, there, there will be fewer courses so that the students can focus on the thesis project and also on uh, looking for placement. And this is Nadia. So Nadia graduated uh, from last year. She's uh, from Germany and uh, she was actually one of those uh, instances where she worked uh, for uh, PepsiCo. Uh, last year and she landed a job uh, afterwards in Barcelona here in Spain so she's working as a transportation process uh, transportation planning process manager and uh, so what she told us is that during the silo we learn about analytical methods supply chain concepts that we apply in practical thesis projects this is what makes the knowledge realistic to me and if we talk about the student profile on the CLOG program, so as you can see, there's a big percentage of engineers. Uh, we do uh, like diversity and uh, uh, so diversity in, 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 a, in every possible way. So not only in, uh, in the gender uh, diversity, so also countries of origin, uh, different backgrounds, uh, experiences. So you see that the average age uh, in general of the CLOG profile, this is not this current class, it's in general, is 31, but uh, we have people uh, on both ends. So we have recent graduates where we have seen uh, the potential, as well as people with more than uh, 12, 15 years of work experience. Uh, we do not do so well in terms of uh, gender. So as you can see, 65% uh, men and 35% uh, women. Uh, we uh, had 12 countries of origin. Uh, this is, of course, uh, from the last uh, generation with an average of uh, 6.5 years of experience. And uh, the deadlines, so as I mentioned before, these are exactly the same as for the GSEM program. Uh, there is something that uh, you may consider is that uh, we have a financial aid which is available for the residential program only. So we have uh, both a loan that is available and that can cover up to 70% of the tuition, as well as partial to full uh, scholarships. Uh, as you can see, so there's quite a few scholarships that are available and that uh, you may be able to apply depending on your uh, country. We have, we do have a, a specific uh, uh, scholarship for women. And then we also have uh, dual degrees uh, with uh, other business schools that uh, have uh, MBA programs. Uh, we have uh, one which is a specific to Mexican candidates in collaboration uh, with FUNE. One which is more general, uh, which is for the uh, supporting promising professionals. And we also have uh, two scholarships which are only for Spanish candidates. Uh, one is the master essay competition that uh, will cover 20,000 uh, euros out of the 24,000. And the uh, Zaragoza Spanish Citizen Scholarship that is uh, 25%. And I think I forgot, yes, the European Supply Chain Professional. Uh, I think that uh, we've also forgot to mention uh, what's the tuition for the programs. Tuition for the Global Supply Chain Management program is 28,000 and uh, for the CELOC program is 24,000. 
And uh, before we move on to the blended program, since Isabella was also awarded one of the scholarships, uh, maybe she can also comment on it. Yeah, so first of all, I think that it's really fortunate that we have all these scholarships available to the applicants. So I think there's like no excuse to not try, to try out for any of these scholarships. Um, basically, it's just a couple of essays that you have to make, but you know, like make them thoughtful and meaningful and you know, like just, just sell yourself. I think it's not super difficult to get one and just the fact that all of these are laid out, everyone should, should try. Yeah, thanks. And uh, let's move on to the last program. So this is the blended program. Uh, so as mentioned before, uh, this program, it's uh, comprised of uh, five online courses. Usually to complete these five online courses and the comprehensive exam can take up to uh, 18 months if you're taking them one at a time. If you're taking more than one at the same time, uh, you can complete it in over a year. And then of course it has the, once you have uh, achieved the comprehensive exam and that uh, you've got the MicroMaster credential, you can apply to uh, either Zaragoza or uh, Nisi. So you would join uh, the programs at MIT and then you would have uh, four months in, in Spain or in the case of David, four months in Malaysia. And this would be the typical profile. So uh, the residential program, uh, Isabella's class is the 16th promotion. This would be the third promotion. So here, then again, uh, we are not doing so well in, in, in terms of uh, gender. So if there are any ladies out there, I'll uh, like to encourage you to, to apply to the program. Uh, here, uh, the, the profile, it's a bit more senior. So usually some of the students that we have in class are sponsored by their companies. And of course, uh, being away for five months, it's, uh, it's more interesting for the companies and uh, they do not need to worry because they go back to their jobs. And uh, uh, in most cases, they, they get a good promotion after the program. So here, the profile is a bit different. So you see 50% are engineers, 40% are from business and economics, and the other remaining 10% from other disciplines. So of course, given the average age, which is 37, uh, then again, uh, we do have some blended students uh, who are young and uh, who sponsor uh, their project and, and their, uh, their tuition by themselves with 13 years of experience and of course eight countries of origin. Uh, here it's also important to say that uh, the difference between uh, the other programs and this program uh, comes uh, when, uh, when we talk about the thesis project. So the students on the blended program will also have to work on a thesis project. So if they will need to start working on it before even really starting the program. So as of October, like uh, the rest of the students. So the students have three different options. One would be, of course, uh, to work with their company because uh, some of them will go back uh, with the company. Then you can also work on a specific topic that uh, you decide that is interest, uh, interesting to you, or uh, you can uh, decide to go for an entrepreneurship uh, project. And uh, this is David. So David got graduated uh, last year. He's from uh, the Czech Republic and he's an engineer manager in, uh, at LECA. He's in, in, in Switzerland. So you see that a uh, uh, change of uh, countries is something that happens a lot uh, with our students. So then again, so what uh, he told us is being an engineer manager in global company requires extensive knowledge in areas such as supply chain strategy, logistics, finance, data analyzing techniques, on top of traditional engineering disciplines. CLOG B program was a great fit for me to expand the knowledge in those fields with just four month interaction in my current role. Gain qualification opened the doors into challenging and diverse projects after my full return to work. And uh, this could be the key dates. So the admission deadlines are a bit different. So there's only two round deadlines. So there's no third round deadline, no uh, rolling admission. So either you applied already by November 1st or the next round deadline is May 1st. So this is mainly because there will be another comprehensive exam in between. And that if you were not able to apply uh, for the first round deadline, then uh, you still have plenty of time to do so for the second round. And of course, uh, it's important for us that uh, we do some uh, activities here on campus, uh, not only with the students, uh, with students from, uh, from the uh, part-time program that is uh, taught in Spanish, and also with the staff. So we have a running team and there's actually a competition uh, within two weeks. So we're encouraging our students to, to go on their running team and, uh, 
and join the, the, the race. Uh, we do have some uh, events uh, like what we did uh, at the beginning of the academic year uh, where the students got to play some sports and uh, network. Uh, so networking is very important for us, not only among the students, but also among the staff. It's a small center and uh, uh, we like for the students to know all the staff members and uh, professors. And by the end of the year, we know each other very well. So it's important, this uh, concept of uh, family is that uh, we get to know each other really well. And I think this is all we had for you today.